Okay, moving on, we're going to get Daniel DeMarco, our real estate investment mortgage broker in. Danielle knows the market inside and out. She knows which mortgage products to put our clients into. And she not only developed or not only gives you a mortgage, she develops a real estate investment plan for you. Yeah, and the best thing about this session with Danielle is that you get to renovate your basement or put a basement suite in for free. You get to use the bank's money. We're going to show you step-by-step -step on how to do that, what Danielle is. And not only that, we're going to show you how the, the city now is giving you a $10,000 incentive to legalize your basement suite. So not only can you put a basement suite in for free, you can get paid to do it. All right. So take it away, Danielle. Uh, the Purchase Plus improvements specifically, um, we apply upfront. We get quotes upfront. So whatever work you want done, you would get a quote for. We would add it to your purchase price. So for example, if you have a $350,000 purchase price and you want to do $40,000 of improvements to legalize that basement suite, your purchase price with the lender becomes $390,000 your down payment becomes 19,500. Whereas if you had just bought for 350 and done the reno yourself, you would have had your $17,500 down payment, which is only $2,000 less. Plus you would have put $40,000 of your own money into the renos. So capping it into the mortgage is $2,000 of your own money only in this specific example versus 40,000. So it's a really great way to cap things in. You typically have about 90 to 120 days to complete the improvements, depending on the lender. And some will actually go up to 180 days, just depending. Uh, things that can be included are um, uh, flooring, paint, windows, obviously developing the kitchen in the basement, uh, bedrooms, side entrances, things like that can all be included in the purchase plus improvements. The only things that really can't be included are chattels. So unless you're doing a full kitchen, we can't include like a stove and a fridge uh, and things like blinds, but we can put furnaces in, um, air conditioning, all these types of things can all be added into purchase plus improvements to help legalize that suite. Now, um, as far as qualifying goes, I kind of did up a, a bit of an example here. So if you were to purchase a home and let's say it's your second property and you have an existing home and it's not legalized. So I used standard household income. I did 130,000. Roughly you could spend about 550,000 with minimum down on another property. If you rent out your current house for let's say 2,500 a month, regular whole house rental. But let's say we legalize that suite and now all of a sudden we have upper rental income and lower rental income. And then let's say instead of 2,500 a month, we're getting 3,500 a month. Not only are you A, in a better cash flow position just from a month to month basis, but B, when we go to qualify for that next property, we have an extra $1,000 a month of rental income. And just using the fancy rental offset that I always mention to all my clients, that could get you about $75,000 more in purchase price. So now you're going from 550 to 625. That is a huge difference in what type of property you can get in this market. So legalizing a basement suite in the lender's eyes allows you to use rental income from the upper and the lower suite in order to qualify for the next property. If we have an illegal suite, we can only use whole house rental, which means if you were to rent to one family for the entire house, what could you charge for rental income? So again, legalizing that suite not only helps you from a cash flow perspective, but also for satisfying our investment plan and accumulating additional properties. And Purchase Plus is great. Like I said, less cash out of your out of your pocket as well. So that's kind of the gist of Purchase Plus. The nice thing is we have a couple more lenders now that are doing Purchase Plus on rentals as well. Uh, it used to be that Purchase Plus was pretty much only owner-occupied, but now there's a couple lenders out there that will, uh, in addition to the one lender that did it before, that will do Purchase Plus on rental properties. So that's something that's been added in the last year here That's that's pretty fantastic. So... That is it. Um, oh, Blaine. Hi, Blaine. Uh, what is the max amount for Purchase Plus? So it depends on the lender and it depends on the improvements you're doing. So standard is up to 20% of the purchase price to a max of 40,000. However, 
depending again on the lender, the strength of the overall application and the improvements you want to do, we've seen up to 150,000. Now, no structural. The lenders are really big on that. If you are adding an addition that doesn't follow under purchase press, if you are putting a suite above the garage that doesn't fall under purchase press plus, um, but doing major improvements and renos to an existing house can qualify. The biggest thing they kind of want to see is that it's still livable during construction. So that's, those are kind of the big things they're looking for. So if you want to go over 40,000, just ask, um, and then we can chat about what that looks like. There's another question, Daniel, for you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So as far as waiting for your mortgage renewal, if you have an existing property, so if you want to develop the basement on a property that you already own, it's just a little bit different. We just call it a refinance. So all you're doing is taking the equity out of your home putting it into your pocket essentially, and then paying for the rentals. So it's not quite the same as a uh, purchase plus. We just take the equity out that's already yours. Whereas with a purchase plus, you can technically still do 5% down payment and include the rentals. But once you already own the property, it's just called a refinance. Yeah. So, you know, there's a great question in the chat here about the city's incentive for secondary suites. And what we want to explain to everybody, we will get to that um, in our seminar tonight. But our take is, is that if you use Danielle's uh, Mortgage Plus improvements, you're actually not even using your own money. Yes, you have to have the money up front. We do work with contractors to take a percentage uh, a deposit on the work done. So you don't have to come up with all of the funds to start the work. And then the funds will be paid out with the Mortgage Plus improvements after the renovations are done. And then you can get a rebate from the city up to $10,000. So here is a perfect way to legalize your basement suite. We're giving you this for free and get paid to do it on top of it. I mean, this is unbelievable. And we're going to go through all of the reasons tonight why you should be legalizing your basement suite. But Danielle... This is an awesome program that our investors are, have been utilizing for many years uh, to legalize their basement suites. Yeah, so yeah, there's another you, question. Oh, sorry, Danielle. Oh, I was just going to say, what also, the, oh, go ahead, Tim. <laughs> yeah, we have a question asking what the deposit percentage is. I'm assuming it's to the contractor. The contractor. Um, our contractor will take 25%. Some people will take 50%. You may even get away with 10% if the contractor has done it you know, many times before. Yeah, our contractor will do that because they know us and they know the funds are coming. So they know the funds are coming um, and, you know, that they're happy to take 25% to get the ball rolling, uh, do the renovation, yeah. and then get paid at the end. And to touch on that quickly, some lenders do require paid receipts. So if you are only going to pay a portion of the deposit, you do need to let your mortgage broker know up front because not every lender is okay with that. Having said that, you can fund the improvements with lines of credit, credit yeah. card, money from family. They don't ask where you're getting the money from to do the improvements. They just typically want to see the paid receipts at the end. Then they'll advance you the money at the end. And then from there, you can just pay your, yourself back and pay your debt back to $0. So you don't have to have the savings. Awesome. Uh, Jess has just got another question. Everybody out there, great questions, by the way. Uh, keep them coming throughout the night. But Jess has just got a question regarding rents when it's illegal suite compared to legal suite. Danielle, if you can just clarify quickly on that. Yeah. So I think what you're asking is if you have a one house, the suite is illegal, but obviously you're considering the legal upstairs. Technically, the upstairs is not a legal suite unless the basement is legalized. Technically, it is just one house. So they would use whole house rental income. So what we do in that case when we're applying for a mortgage is we order what's called a market rent letter. So a market rent letter would take a property that is, again, illegal in the basement, uh, and they would just say and compare it to other standard properties across the board and say, OK, if you rented this house out to one family and use it as a single family unit, what could you get in rents? So you don't actually have to rent the whole house out as one to use the rental income. We would just order the market rent letter for anybody that has an illegal suite and has the upstairs and the basement rented. 
Awesome. Awesome. And just to clarify for Sarah out there, Sarah, it really depends on your contractor, how much money they want up front. Our contract, contractors have done hundreds of basement suites. Uh, they take 25% if, if the client's working with us. Uh, and then it, it depends on your contractor. So yes, your contractor will need a deposit to move forward. Um, usually but you can speaking. use again, lines of credit, credit card, gifted family money. Yeah. It doesn't have to be savings, but yes. Yeah, so I think, I think the correct answer to that question is, is the bank will not front the money for the, for whatever renovations you're doing. They have to see that they're done before they add that amount to your mortgage. Um, they just, it's just a, a way to avoid fraud. And not yeah. only that, you have to kind of stick to the renovations that you've got quoted for. So, yeah, so, exactly. yeah Danielle, you might have seen, you, I know you've seen other circumstances, right? Yeah, we've seen a little bit different. So like typically what happens to kind of touch on what Tim said is whatever your improvements are, let's call it 40,000, you do the improvements. That money is basically sitting at the lawyer's office in trust. Once your improvements are done, we order an inspection and I use the word inspection very loosely. It's not an expect inspection like a home inspection. It's an appraiser that goes out and checks off the boxes. Let's say you gave me a quote that says you were going to renovate the basement bedroom, basement bathroom and install LVP in the basement. They're going to go in the house and go check the basement bedrooms done, check the basement bathrooms done, check the LVPs done and send a report in that says, okay, a hundred percent of the improvements are complete as quoted. Then that 40,000 would come back to you from the lawyer deposited into your account. And you can use that money to pay yourself back or pay the contractor. Now, if you get me a quote and it says you're going to legalize a basement suite and instead of legalizing the basement suite, you put a bedroom and a bathroom in and then renovate your upstairs kitchen because you really wanted a really cool kitchen to live in. That isn't going to fly. The bank's going to come back and say, hey, sorry, you didn't do the improvements that were listed in the quote. We're not going to advance you the full amount. We're only going to advance you the portion of the work that you actually completed. So it is really important that when you get the quote, you follow through on the improvements you're being quoted for in order to get the full improvement money back at the end. Yeah, that's awesome. And just we we know this is a basement um, seminar tonight. But yes, we've seen like Nico's on the call. Nico has done it for a garage. Um, people have done it for full kitchens, upstairs kitchens. So um, you could really use it for multiple things. Uh, and you know what? The rule of thumb is they normally, Daniel, will give you 10% of the purchase price, but we've seen actually double that. So yeah. um, it could be a lot higher as well, depending on what you're doing. Exactly. Okay. Thanks okay. a lot, Danielle. So if anyone wants to get hold of Danielle, there is her credentials. Fire off an email to her or a text, and she's very good at getting back to people.